These are two microcontrollers. Both run at 16 MHz clock speed, yet one of them runs the LED blinking example significantly faster. The microbit blinks at about 55 Hz and the blinking is visible by the naked eye. The Arduino Uno blinks over 2 MHz and can be only measured with some instruments. Both of them are running the blinky example as fast as they can, but the Arduino is 47,000 times faster. Did I add some delays to cheat? No extra delays, but to be honest, this is a bit extreme in case. Anyway, why the big difference? The answer is overhead. We will discuss the difference between high-level and low-level programming languages and the effects of abstraction. Before you go raging in the comments, this video tries to demonstrate the effects of overhead in a measurable way and not intended to this one or another programming language. Also, overhead is not exclusive to microcontrollers, but measuring time with a logic analyzer is easier and more accurate with embedded stuff. You will have overhead in desktop apps, mobile apps and web services too. It's good to see, a function call is not free. So, why use abstraction if it's that bad for performance? Because it's necessary to finish anything in time. For example, some good old console exclusive games had the convenience of having one purpose only. Run on only one specific hardware. You could write the game to specifically work on that single console. But what if a piece of software has to support multiple hardware configurations? Yes. Back then, when there were less than 10 sound card types, you could write a game which did support all available sound cards, but is this method future-proof and is it possible today? If I want to play a sound effect, I don't care what plays the sound. If I want to access a file, I don't care if it's on a spinny disk hard drive, CD, micro SD card or SSD. If I want to access the internet, I don't care if it's Fiber or Starlink. We usually want something to hide the unnecessary details, so we use abstraction to cover up those details and substitute them with something more helpful. It can be an operating system, some drivers, middleware, or a full feature development kit. Those promise to take care of the boring and tedious micromanagement so we can focus on the important parts. An operating system schedules tasks and controls hardware access. Drivers translate hardware-specific instructions to generic ones and vice versa. Or a multi-platform game development kit lets you write a game once and release on several different platforms. Abstraction usually boosts productivity. But back to our example. Let's max out the blink frequency. We will switch to Microchip Studio to access some professional tools and options for our AVR. Our first example was written in C, but we can do even better, assembly. Great language to optimize your code, and if we add some loop unrolling, we can go beyond 7 MHz. That's 137,000 times faster than our microbit with Python. We maxed out this example and can't really add any more significant improvement. But does it really worth it? Does it really mean anything? C and assembly are faster than Python. Congratulations, we proved the obvious. And we just used a whole microcontroller to generate a square wave. An oscillator can easily generate much higher frequencies for lower cost. Also, if we zoom out a bit, the real top frequency is about 6.74 MHz in average, because jumping back in the loop is an instruction which takes at least one CPU cycle to execute, not even considering pipelines, caches and other factors that could influence execution time. Last but not least, is this assembly code even good? Assembly is a low-level programming language, the lowest of all. It means it highly depends on the hardware, in this case, the instructions of the CPU. It has literally zero abstraction. Just like every CPU, this AVR microcontroller's processor has a set of commands, and it can't understand anything else. Each CPU family, or to be precise, ISA, or Instruction Set Architecture, has its own set of commands. If I wanted to run this assembly code on the microbit, it would fail. Assembly is not portable. Rewriting such a small program is not a big deal, but a whole real-life application? That would suck. To free ourselves from these limits, higher-level languages were introduced. The level of a programming language means its abstraction level from the running hardware. C, for example, is a high-level programming language compared to assembly because a well-written C code can be run on different machines. You don't need to rewrite, just recompile for a different target. Python is even higher level than C. For example, 
you don't have to care about if your integer should be 32 or 64 bits in size or memory management. It just has its price. It's slow and cumbersome to write assembly, but runs fast. Python is easy to write, but usually runs much slower. But enough talk about high and low levels, let's see some examples how abstraction can affect performance. Let's clean up our assembly example and write it without any loop unrolling the regular way. Turn the pin on and off in an infinite loop. The result is not that bad, it's about 1.6 MHz. But wait a minute, the first C example ran much faster at 2.63 MHz. This is because higher level doesn't automatically mean slower. With high level languages, compilers can do some advanced optimization and can end up in much faster binaries than you could do with manually fine tuning with inline assembly in reasonable time. But we will see some other examples too. This was an exception, extra abstraction usually adds some overhead. Also, we should switch to bare metal C and see the great example for overhead, the difference between debug and release. If you debug some code, the debugger knows what part is being executed and its extra information in the code. In debug mode, our example runs at almost exactly 2 MHz, but what happens if I switch to release? The debug symbols are stripped and optimization is usually turned on, all depends on the compiler settings. The very same C code now runs at 2.68 MHz, 34% faster. Also the final hex file got 8 bytes smaller, not much, but that made so much difference. Furthermore, our current example directly depends on these microcontrollers registers. DDR is the data direction register and port is the port register. What do you guess? Does a microbit have DDR registers? It doesn't. This code is written in C, yet not portable. Ok, but it's at least portable between Arduinos, right? Wrong. The UNOS built-in LED is on port B pin 5 and the MEGAS LED is on port B pin 7. This is outrageous. This must be changed. And that's exactly what Arduino made. Introduced a hardware abstraction layer, or HAL. They added two cool functions, pin mode and digital write along with many others. Pin mode manipulates the DDR register and digital write manipulates the port register. With this, we can finally switch to Arduino ID and write a really portable Arduino C++ code. Uh, Arduino is C++ not C, just to be clear. This AJL has all the info about pin mapping. You don't have to know which port belongs to which pin, just use a number on your board. And when you change boards from Uno to Leonardo or Mega, the same pin will do the same. Abstraction means convenient stuff like this. It can speed up development or remove hardware dependencies. It's especially useful while prototyping. You can end up with a totally different hardware in the end. But let's face the consequences, how slow it is. Instead of 2 to 3 MHz, we are at 149 kHz. It's about 10 times slower than our C example. The digital write function has to do some extra calculations to map our pin numbers and it costs precious CPU time. Abstraction is rarely free. But we have only talked about speed penalties and there's another, storage. It's especially problematic with microcontrollers and becoming a bigger issue every year with lazy programmers and complex development kits. Let's remove the pin mode and digital write functions and use the good old direct register write method. We get back to our 2 MHz frequency, but what else changed? Compilers don't put unused code or uncalled functions in the final binaries. If we don't use digital write or pin mode at all, the final hex file will be 777 bytes smaller, that's 37% less. But if we compare it to our previous hex files, it's still bloated. The assembly examples were 71 and 149 bytes long, the C ones needed 410 and 418 bytes, the Arduino frameworks triples the binary size in this case and that's a lot. To add more context, let me present you another dev kit. My beloved and inexpensive STM32 C0 board. If I let the ID initialize and configure all functions, it will surely add some extra code, right? You bet. I'm not using the ADC or I2C yet, everything related will be included in the final binary because at least some part of the AJL is called during startup. The resulting hex file is about 20 kilobytes, but if I only configure the GPIO, the final hex file size is dropped to 
8 kilobytes. Having that code in the binaries doesn't always slow it down, both bloated and strip versions run exactly as fast. But having Arduino doing some background tasks makes some measurable difference. 2.63 MHz instead of 2.68 MHz. Just 1.9% slower, but slower. Including random libraries can affect performance and it's highly discouraged. In Python, the wildcard import is considered bad practice because it will pull some unused and unnecessary code, possibly slowing your code even more. Let's close the gap between the high-level and low-level implementations and have a realistic conversion. This STM32 microcontroller is a close relative to the microbit. The microbit has a Cortex-M0 CPU core and the STM32 C0 has a Cortex-M0 Plus core. 8-bit AVRs are really outdated, so we should focus on the STM32 as the professional counterpart. The STM32, as I mentioned before, needed only 8 to 20 kilobytes of program space to produce about 353 kilohertz signal. But there's a catch. It ran only at 12 megahertz, because I couldn't configure it to 16 megahertz. We have to compensate the measurement, so it would give us 471 kilohertz signal at 16 megahertz CPU clock. And if we change the code a little bit, it goes up to 416 kilohertz, which is 555 kilohertz after compensation. I saved the best example to the end, and it's plain idiotic. The 55 hertz pin toggling is just insanely low. I know these frameworks add a lot of overhead, but that much? I didn't expect that. So I tried to toggle a regular pin, and the results are crazy. The MicroPython version jumped to 7 kHz and the Blocky to 83 kHz. Can you guess why? There's a hint. We can set the brightness of each LED. Also, the LEDs on the microbit are not directly connected to pins, but are in a much more pin-efficient matrix configuration. Setting the brightness for each LED assumes some kind of PWM in the background, so the comparison was really unfair. I know the huge difference was a big fat lie, but I honestly forgot about the LED matrix, and more importantly, the end user doesn't care why did something happen. We want to blink one LED, and the high-level framework doesn't allow us to pick a single LED and blinking that without utilizing an underlying LED matrix and PWM driver. This is having too much abstraction. Many libraries are easy to use and comfortable first, but exclude the possibility of optimizing for special cases. Another example is the Python type system. The generic integer type is really convenient, until you have to process a ton of data fast. No wonder NumPy is so popular. It can speed up calculations by staying inside the Python ecosystem, just by introducing fixed length integers. After so many examples, let's close today's episode with a final conversion. The MicroPython example produces 7 kHz signals at 60 MHz clock, the JavaScript blocky goes up to 83 kHz, and the professional native C wins with 555 kHz. So, to be absolute fair, the professional approach is just 75 to 7 times faster, which is still a lot, but not tens of thousands. But to put that into context, many embedded devices run on batteries, and energy efficiency is key. If the Python code would deplete the battery in a day, the JavaScript one would last a week with the same battery, and the STM32 would be still alive after two and a half months. This would be critical for a smartwatch. Charge daily, weekly, or every other month. But back to the examples. The MicroPython hex file is almost 2 MB, the JS blocky is over 1 MB, and the STM32 only needs 8 KB to do the same task. Without stating the obvious, professional code wins, some closing thoughts. We should compare the Python and blocky examples to compare apples with apples. MicroPython still runs about 12 times slower compared to a similarly super high-level framework and produced one and a half times larger binary. That's what I call an absolutely unnecessary overhead, and that's why measuring the performance of your code matters. You can find bottlenecks and make responsible design decisions, which library to include in your professional work or hobby project. I hope you learned something valuable today, and see you in the next video.